other week I watched a series on Netflix. Uh, it's called Jailbirds, and it's about women in jail. It's very interesting from a psychological perspective, and I mainly watched it to understand a bit what makes criminals criminals, what makes them cross from white to black, so to say. And there's something in there in, in the last episode which uh, got stuck with me and I want to talk about it. Let me show you the clip. Wow. Well, the Taylor Cody that is in, in front of this court is very different from the Taylor Cody that testified in front of the jury. Sitting before me right now is a tearful, vulnerable looking young woman. And I understand why you are the least culpable of the four that participated in it. But quite candidly, you're in a sense to me a lot more scary. You didn't just go along with the ride, you provided a mask. You took off your shirt and he used that to disguise himself when he broke into that home and murdered those innocent people. He watched a man gun down in front of his very home. And then what did you do? You went back to the hotel and went down to the breakfast buffet. Who eats? Who has an appetite? After hearing and watching people getting murdered, who does that? Something that happened there is not quite right. And the thing that upset me a little was that the judge made a psychological assessment of the defendant. And that psychological assessment became part of the judgment and the sentence. And I think that's not right. Why? because a judge is not qualified to make a psychological assessment. If a judge wants the psychological assessment of the defendant to be part of the sentence, it should re request a psychologist or a psychiatrist to make that assessment, not do it herself. Now, I don't want to judge the judge uh, for various reasons. First of all, I, I don't know the case. I just have seen a glimpse of it. I don't know that girl. I, I just saw uh, uh, some short interviews of this girl. Of this girl, um, and the judge is, you know, my heart goes out to her. She's overworked and she deals with really deep shit on a daily basis. And I actually don't think that it is, the problem is with the judge. I think the problem is with, it's an institutional problem. I believe that the psych, a psychological assessment should be part of every trial and should somehow be reflected in the judgment and in the sentence. But anyways, uh, Back to this case, the psychological assessment that the judge made is basically this. She says the girl is a psychopath. A psychopath is a person without feelings and without empathy. Yeah? Somebody who is extremely manipulative, rational and can hurt or kill people cold-blooded. No, I think that assessment is wrong. Because if you look at the girl, she can express empathy. Well, she cried. She can express emotions. She can feel. It's crazy because I don't even remember going to the breakfast bar. But I feel like it's selfish for me to even be upset right now. Like, less than three years. I get to be home with my family and these people that are gone now, they don't get that. 
I know I didn't do it, but it's like I got away with it. And I feel wrong. Now, uh, of course you have to be careful with this assessment because psychopaths are uh, perfect liars and, and actors. So that could be faked. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is that the judge made a judgment for which she was not qualified. Now, why did the girl behave as she behaved if she was not a psychopath? Well, very simple. I mean, if, if this was really someone who uh, maybe just took drugs or stole a few things, but never actually had hurt a, hurt a person to that point in her life, I mean, two people got killed right in front of her and she must have realized that she is involved, that she's part of it, and that's enough to uh, send someone into shock. And when you're in shock, you don't really know what you're doing. Uh, you can do any kind of uh, stupid things. And psychological or emotional shocks, they can last hours, days, even weeks. I don't even remember going to the breakfast bar. Uh, they can be even delayed. Yeah, so maybe for the rest of the day she acts normal and then the next day she's a shock happens and she does all sorts of weird things. When I really like fully processed what was happening, it was already too late. Like it was just like self-preservation mode after that. But I don't even want to say that because that sounds like an excuse and there really is no excuse that like at the end of the day I should have got my ass out the car. Anyways, yeah, anyways, uh, my assessment could be wrong. That's, uh, that's not the point. The point is that the judge should not have made this psychological assessment and I don't think it's her fault. It's an institutional problem. Uh, People do not value psychology. That judge basically called you a sociopath. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, which is a shame because, which brings me back to how I began this, uh, how I began is what makes people criminals. It's, it's all in the head. And if you watch this series, you will notice that most of the time uh, problems start when uh, emotions get out of hand. So all the girls in jail, uh, which were shown in this, in this series, um, were sociopaths. Sociopaths are people who have difficulties to control their emotions. So the emotions get out of hand, they get angry and they get violent, they commit a crime and then go to jail. So it looks for me that 80-90% of, of all crimes that were committed there are of so sociopathic, uh, for sociopathic reasons. And uh, yeah, how do you solve that? Again, very, very simple you put people through an anger management course. Then I ask myself, where are the psychologists in the jail? Why don't get these people in jail an anger management course? Could it be that with such a simple thing we could reduce crimes by half or even more? Something to really think about. Love and light.